Now, let me start off by saying this. First, is that these are the type of shows I'm going to expect out of WWE going forward. It was part of my concern about the whole thing with the network and now only having to justify a $9.99 price point as opposed to a $50 or more price point is that the effort level heading into bigger events, the special events, the pay-per-views, if you will, was going to decrease. The importance on these shows was going to decrease. And in my opinion, I feel like that's exactly what has happened. Now, also, I want to say this. If you had no expectations for this show or very low expectations for this show and the show slightly or somewhat exceeded them, that does not make them a good show. Does that make sense? I think it's important to draw this distinction here. As I saw numerous people post via social media that the show surprised them in the sense that it at least exceeded their very low expectations or they had no hopes for the show and they got a little bit out of it, that doesn't mean it's good. And frankly, to say that it's good just proves once again how much the WWE has been able to successfully lower your standards as a wrestling fan and our standards in general. We should expect better. We should demand better. Having to sit there and lower our expectations to such an incredibly small level just in the hopes that WWE somewhat exceeds them so that way we can justify ourselves why we watch this is not a good enough reason to sit there and give the WWE a pass. Because in a lot of ways, again, like I said a moment ago, this is largely what I'm going to come to expect out of the WWE when it comes to their special events or their pay-per-views, if you will. A largely forgettable show that was pretty much a three-hour waste of time that tries to suck you in with that one thing, and even that one thing wasn't that great, but because of the rest of the crap that it was on top of, it was the peak, it was the summit, so it most certainly is going to shine. A lot of stupidity, a lot of dumb booking decisions. This is the modern WWE pay-per-view for you in a nutshell. If you look at the pre-show, you've got R-Truth and Stardust. Why is the Stardust character even a thing? Hopefully they're getting ready to kill that off. You, know, you got Cody Rose, a talented guy, and that's the best you could do with him. You're putting him on a freaking pre-show. That, that about figures. And then you've got the Ascension versus the Meta Powers. And apparently the WWE going with this whole cosplay thing with Sandow and Axel playing the roles of the Macho Man and Hulk Hogan. You know, I would rather they be the Nacho Man and the Huckster, in my opinion. With that said, they apparently have so little confidence that their audience will actually even understand what the hell is going on that instead of actually calling them by their actual name of the Meta Powers, we are calling them the Mega Powers. We're just flat out ripping off. Like, we're trying to take something from an element of society today and then still finding a way to not do it right. Why? Because the WWE doesn't have a fucking clue. And then, of course, you have the Meta Powers lose to the Ascension for God knows what fucking reason. So two people on one side that you have no fucking clue as a company what to do with lose to two people on the other side that the company doesn't have a fucking clue what to do with. Just, it's frustration. That's what so much of this company is today. It's frustration. And in a lot of ways, it's a representation of the shit fest, frankly, that is major North American professional wrestling, period. If it's a bigger wrestling company in the States, especially talking about the United States here, if you think it's good, I want to know what you're smoking, I want to know what you're drinking, in order to be able to fool yourselves into thinking that any of these companies are doing anything other than hot, drizzling garbage. But speaking of hot, drizzling garbage and a phenomenal waste of time, let's talk about the main show itself. You kick off with Ziggler versus Sheamus. Yeah, because that's a match I want to see. That's a match I need to see. That's a match I haven't seen for umpteen dozen and fucking times already. So as soon as this was announced as the beginning, I'm like, oh, wait, I got to sit there and drop a deuce. And that's exactly what I did. I got done with that deuce just in time to see that the network feed had frozen, which, of course, was a theme throughout the night. Pretty much every single match, at least one time, the network would freeze on me for different intervals, lengths of time. This is not acceptable. Again, regardless of the price that people are paying, myself especially, if we're paying a price, we expect the service to actually work. And I'm not going to sit there and say that it's my service because anything else that I use with the streaming device via 
how I use it works just fine. The only time I have an issue is the network. So all other things being constantly working fine, one thing does it, that would point to the company needs to fix their fucking network shit. The picture quality was horrible off and on throughout the show. Just atrocious. But then you get Ziggler versus Sheamus in. You know, many of you probably will want to believe that Ziggler busted himself open the hard way with that headbutt, whatever the fuck. It sure looked like a blade job to me. I don't care what type of stitches, spin, bullshit the WWE tried to put on that crap. Some of the actions of Ziggler before and after that famous headbutt seem to clearly indicate that this was a juice job. If this was a juice job, what the fuck were they juicing in this match for? And if this was a hard way... Then how the fuck do you hard weigh yourself on a damn headbutt? How stupid can you be? Sheamus wins and not a fuck was given. Then we get to the tag title match. Of course, you know, you're in Baltimore. You've got this group called the New Day. It's three black guys. Do I even need to speak to what could have been a potentially accomplished if the WWE went in one direction with this black heel faction instead of the dumb dick, corny, hokey, bullshit fashion that they went with. Now, these guys, Xavier, Kofi, Big E, they're trying to make the best out of it. By God, they're doing a good job with the shit that they were handed. But it's still shit. And even when they sit there and they call out Adam Jones, they didn't even go all in. They didn't even sit there and do nearly enough. They didn't even do a good job of drawing cheap heat because, again... They're saddled with the bullshit that is today's WWE's creative process. But then you get the actual match itself. Aside from the occasional botch, a good match. A fun tag title match. Shame there wasn't really much story going into this to make it matter that much more. But at the end, of course, I got the biggest chuckle of all out of the entire show with the finish. Because only the WWE would sit there and say, Oh, they did a black guy switcheroo. Ah, what the fuck does it matter? They all look the same. I mean, seriously. They're not twins. You realize, Vince, that black people look different, right? Even if you're white, black people can look different. And they sat there and went with the twin magic finish because these are two black guys. <laughs> these racist fucks. The opportunity lost. With them being in fucking Baltimore with a black heel faction. And they decided to do a twin magic finish because, oh, uh, they're both black so they gotta look the same, right? <laughs> then you get Bray Wyatt and Ryback. These guys did the best they could considering the circumstance and situation. Two guys that are kind of spinning their wheels. Two guys that are kind of stuck in, you know, WWE mid-card hell. Two guys that should be a lot more. And I wish were a lot more to this company because they could both be big stars. And unfortunately, both of them are on that path to just being colossal waste of time and disappointments. Uh, then you get to the U.S. title match. And as right here where you get the perfect crystallization of so many of the problems with today's WWE product. And most especially you get to the whole thing of where I talk about that so much of it is just a waste of time. Because John Cena versus Rusev, this entire feud, became a waste of time. Instead of John Cena having obstacles to overcome, as is so often the case, he actually becomes the obstacle himself. Instead of the heel actually acting like the heel on a consistent basis and doing a good job of getting real legitimate heel heat, we have the babyface John Cena actually acting like the bully and the heel more often than not, but yet people are still expected to get behind the guy and cheer him. Now we get to the I Quit match, which serves absolutely no purpose because, again, you haven't done nearly enough to get Rusev over at going head-to-head -head with Cena. You haven't really thrown Rusev anything. The one fucking victory he does have at Fastlane, of course, became only out of some bullshit. As it always does, it seems like, whenever it's something involving John Cena. There's always an excuse. It's always something. Unless it's Brock Lesnar. And that's the truth of the matter. And here it is. Cena beats him at WrestleMania. He beats him at Extreme Rules. Why the fuck do we need this match? So, of course, we're going to an I Quit match where everybody already knows what's going to happen. Everybody already knows who's going to win. So, again, why go through the motions? Why fucking do it? Either sit there or don't do it. Or you do it and you find a way to shock every fucking buddy. Now, here's an idea. You've got Lana, the built-in heater for Rusev. Instead of prematurely splitting up the two of them like the dumb fucks the WWE are, you could sit there and say, hey, 
Maybe you would have already split up Lana from Rusev and you had her aligned with Cena. Or you did something where Cena was trying to protect her and make her feel good about herself. I'll get back to that in a moment. Or you have Lana just as much on Rusev's side as ever before. You do any number of things. Then you get to the whole match itself. And here's a fucking idea. How about you get to the end and Rusev threatens to do something fucked up to Lana, like beat the shit out of her, and that forces Cena to say, I quit. Now you've gotten Cena to do something that nobody saw coming. You've got Cena doing something that kind of shakes fundamentally to his core what his character is all fucking about. Yet at the same point in time, he comes across as a bit of a hero because he's protecting the good damsel in distress from this big Bulgarian brute Russian sympathizing fucking woman beating bully. How much better does that work? Then you even have a chance... To have another match, you have a reason and excuse to have another match. You could have even sat there and spun it where Lana went over to Cena's side as one big ruse and Rusev and Lana went out at all along and they chuckle all the Russian live long day. Just anything other than the lame ass fucking shit they did. Now people will tell you that this match was good and that it was this and that it was that. At the end of the day, who fucking cares? What the fuck does it matter? Because nothing creative happened, nothing original happened, and furthermore, if we're being perfectly honest with ourselves, here is where the stupidity and the ridiculousness of the lack of detail the WWE has today comes into play. It's an I quit match, so at the very, very beginning, Rusev says the words I quit, no matter what happened, no matter how it came about, the match is over! At the very beginning, it's over! But no, instead, we go into the freaking match, Cena is passed out, people are fucking confused, namely the dumb dick commentators, about whether or not the match can end in an I quit match where the guy has to say I quit in order for the match to be over because he's fucking passed out, he can't say I quit. And then you get to the finish, and now Lana can sit there and say that Rusev quits even though specifically the stipulation of the match says that Rusev or Cena had to say those two words. Just stupidity and a fucking waste of time. Divas tag match. Waste of fucking time. Barrett Neville was not a waste of fucking time in theory because I like the chemistry of these two guys and I like the fact that they have a little bit of an issue here. I like that Way Barrett is the king of the ring. I like that the WWE is at least spotlighting Neville somewhat, at least if anything else like a new version of Evan Bourne. I wish they would do a little bit more, actually try to establish a character, but God forbid we get that. But then you get to the whole thing of you have a wishy-washy finish just so that way Neville can do his fucking thing anyways and it makes sense why. Anyways, like I said, it's a waste of time. Pretty much everything was all pointing to this main event really needing to deliver to save this pay-per-view from being totally pooned on. And we got to the main event. You know, even throughout the night. Instead of doing different interviews with each of the four participants and really trying to establish them and try to give us reasons to get behind one of them or really drive home the issue, the focus, as it always seems to be now, is on Seth Rollins and fucking Kane. Either go there with Kane or don't fucking go there with Kane. Either way, again, if you're not going to go there, then don't go there and stop wasting fucking time. And the whole thing, the first half of this match, the whole emphasis is not on the four participants, but it's on what the fuck is Kane going to do. Just so that way we could sit there and get to what we pretty much all probably saw coming anyways, is that he's going to protect his own ass and he's going to help Seth Rollins. And this is the whole problem with Seth Rollins being the champion. In many ways, he should be the perfect champion for WWE right now. But you have a major credibility issue here. If your heel champion, no matter how chicken shit or cowardly, always has to win via interference or help in some way, shape, or form, then why would anybody take him seriously? And that seriousness does matter. It speaks to credibility, and those champions have to have credibility. And Seth Rollins as a champion right now has very minimal credibility. And that's the truth. And even when we talk about the stupidity of it, if it's a fatal four-way and there's no disqualifications, why the fuck are J&J &J Security and Kane picking and choosing their spots of when they're going to fucking help? They should be in there the whole fucking time. If Kane is that devoted to helping Seth Rollins win, then why isn't he doing his part? Why isn't Triple H, who can manage to show up at the end of the night, why isn't he coming down and helping Seth Rollins? This makes absolutely no fucking sense. I get that it's professional wrestling, but Jesus Christ. Can we sit there and at least try? Can we try? Now look, 
I'll admit, I had quite a bit of fun once we got past the cane part with this main event. Especially when you got the little shield part, that was cool. You know, it's fun to have those nostalgia type of moments. Because God knows what else do you freaking have to grasp for with this company and their product right now. You really don't have much. But even when you get to like Ambrose and Reigns and they're sitting there cleaning house and they're doing all this shit. They're facing off with each other. Reigns is sitting there saying, loser buys beers. How about the fact that you got your other two opponents, Randy Orton and Seth Rollins, are fucking knocked out? How about you try to get one of them into the ring and pin him to win the championship? You'd think that would maybe be on the minds of both of those guys. Just, And then we get to the finish. And I have to be honest, I was at the point where I'm sitting there and saying, there's three guys that I could make an argument for winning this match and it being the right decision, and none of them is Seth Rollins. And I really meant that. I mean, because this is... It's just getting bad. It's not Seth Rollins' fault. It's not saying Seth Rollins' is champion is beyond hope. But this shit is getting old. This shit is getting really played out. This shit is frankly getting boring. And frankly, I think the WWE product needs an infusion of something. They need a spark. Something that, yeah, even a Randy Orton as a champion could have potentially given them. Most certainly something that a Dean Ambrose as champion could have given them. And to a certain degree, maybe even a Roman Reigns as champion could have given them. But instead, we have Seth Rollins hit a bad, dumb, horrible pedigree on Randy Orton. Orton says, I'll hit one on you perfect, but I ain't selling for you, brother. Breakfast Club rules, bitches. And that's how it ends. At least Ambrose wasn't in there just to eat the pinfall, so I was wrong on that. Thank God, nor should he have been. Orton should be the guy to eat the pinfall there. But then Triple H comes out after the match is over, and I'm just like, hmm. You had fun moments in the main event. Clearly, to me, the best match of the night from an, a pure entertainment standpoint. But still overbooked, still stupid, still a lot of bullshit and didn't do anything to change my thoughts on this show that it was anything other than a colossal three-hour, largely waste of time. This is supposed to be payback. And you would think in part, part of the stipulation of it being payback is that there is actually payback, which would lend you to believe that maybe on this show more faces should go over than heels. But when you look at it, technically, if you really want to examine it, the only baby face... And I use that term very loosely here. The only babyface that went over clean the entire night, so to speak, and even that was questionable and bullshit, was John Cena. This is just bad. I've seen far, far, far worse pay-per-views over the past few years from WWE, don't get me wrong. But I'm just sitting there the whole time, and I'm looking for something. I'm itching for something. I'm begging for something. I'm hoping for something. And again, just like Raw, it felt like another three-hour waste of time. And it's largely felt like another three-hour Raw. These are supposed to be special events. They're supposed to be pay-per-views. These are supposed to be the type of shows that you could justify charging people a price for. And it makes it even worse when you're doing this shit on your free network months. This is just bad. If you want to think it was good, that's fine. But to me, that just speaks once again to how much our standards as wrestling fans, as WWE fans, have been lowered so artfully, skillfully, and successfully by the WWE. I mean, can you really sit there and honestly say this was a good show? Ziggler, Sheamus, for the umpteenth dozen fucking time. You know, tag title match. It was botchy. It was fun, but it was botchy. And you have the Black Heel group in Baltimore and not the right type of Black Heel group in Baltimore. Wyatt Ryback was what it was. The U.S. title match was a colossal waste of time, as was the Divas tag match. What fucking purpose or point did that serve? And then the main event. It's all of this just for Seth Rollins to retain. You, If you didn't watch this show, you really didn't miss much of anything because, frankly, nothing fucking happened. And if you want to say stuff did happen, well, let me rephrase it then. Nothing good happened. Nothing interesting really, truly happened. They call this show Payback. I wish it was Payback, where the WWE paid me back my three hours and my 9.95 that I gave up for this shit. 